Okay, so today Andrea and I are going to make a simple, really simple lemon faucet, um, which is quite simple. All these ingredients I've got here are for garnish. I'll just take a stir out of the way. So we've got some dehydrated oranges, bits of meringue, a bit of uh, biscuit, and some raspberries, and uh, some curry, just to garnish it up. And we'll show you how to do that once it sets. But it's really, really simple. And we've got some of the lemon gel. I don't know why. So now Gino Capacho Cap there. Uh, and then over here, what we're going to do is make some really simple Java cakes that you could do, maybe do along with the kids. Um, big ones or small ones, doesn't matter. Uh, and, and the kids really enjoy um, doing that, getting in amongst all the, the chocolate and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by um, making our lemon faucet. And while I'm doing that, and Andrew's going to put some sugar. So he's got uh, 50 grams of sugar, 50 grams of flour, just plain flour, two eggs, and we have got some marmalade for the, the jelly center, but we'll show you how to do that in, in a few minutes. So Andrew's going to cream up the eggs and the sugar, so he's going to put it in the bowl. What I've got in here is uh, 500 mils of double cream. So it's uh, not a very healthy sweet. Uh, we'll put that into here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly, really slowly, uh, not bring it to the boil, but bring it to a simmer and let it simmer gently for three minutes. The danger about this is it'll boil over and go all over your cooker and, and things like that. So you need to keep a, a really close eye on it. Even if you have maybe a, a bowl of cold water just to dip the pan into, just to chill it down and stop it from bubbling up, um, or even a cold spoon to put into it. But just be really, really careful and just uh, take your time with that. So Andrew's going to cream away that. So he's going to get it mixed in first of all. You get it all mixed in, be really brutal with it. Yeah. So you can get all the sugar dissolved and get it started. Okay. We'll turn it off there. So over on the, the cooker at the side here, he's got some water which he's brought to the boil. He's now turned it down to a simmer and he's going to cream that for about eight minutes until it goes to a nice ribbon stage over there. Okay, so he's going to do that. Yeah, so we'll give it a minute and then I'll do it then. So here I've got the cream. So hopefully this gas will work. Yeah, so I've got that. I'm going to keep a really close eye on that because I don't want it to go all over my good uh, bench. So Andrew's been over here for about eight minutes. Very good, Andrew. Time flies. Eh? So he's got it all nicely kind of at ribbon stage. What he's going to do is he's going to gently fold in the flour. Sometimes in the past what I've done is just got the whisk and then just kind of gently folded it in with the whisk. But uh, what we'll do at this time, we'll, we'll just, um, Randy gets a spoon, and we'll just put half in to start with, and then he's just going to gently fold it in. So what he's done is he's whipped that, creamed it over a simmering uh, pot of warm water, which kind of semi-cooks the mix, and then he's just going to do a figure of eight, and then just mix that all in. Good. Meanwhile, I'm keeping an eye on the the cream. So this cream is for the lemon faucet. Everything here is for the lemon faucet. Everything on this side is for the Jaffa cakes. Okay, so hopefully we'll not get uh, a bit confused, um, which is quite easy to confuse me. Anyway. So if we just get this up and going. Okay, so we've got that all folded in. I'm just going to add some more in. Like that. Just keep adding it in. So maybe, maybe a third at a time and just keep adding it in. I'm keeping an eye on my cream. I'm going to touch it. Um, as soon as you ignore the cream, it will boil over. Okay, so just make sure you keep, keep an eye on it. Yep, just gently pull that in. Now we'll just put the last of the flour in. So remember it's uh, 50 grams of flour, just plain flour, okay? That's all you need, and just mix that in. Just take these out of the way, turn them up over here. So 
we have got our, just a normal cake tin. Yeah, and what we've done is we've greased it with our oil and just each one and then rub it around with a bit of tissue paper. Make sure it's well greased. Yep. Some people what they do is they use, you know, the little cake uh, papers that you get. I uh, can't remember the right name for them at the moment. I'm sure uh, my dad will tell me, but anyway, the cake, one of the papers, is it? Anyway, you put them in. It doesn't really work. It's too difficult to try and get it out once you get the chocolate and stuff in. So you're better just doing it like that and uh, just keeping it nice and simple. So Andrew's got that mix already. So then he's just going to half fill each one. So you're just going to take a bit of the mixture, yeah, and then just half fill them all. So the cream is just starting to bubble. So I'm going to turn it right down. I'm frightened that it will uh, boil over, so I'll turn that right the whole way down. And then you're going to let it simmer for three minutes, okay? Yep, just fill that in, yep. You don't want them too high because you want to put in the, the filling and then put the chocolate on top. So you want them not to rise too much. That's enough for that one, Andrew. So remember you've got that mixture to do all nine, okay? So a wee bit too much in that one, but that one's perfect, okay? So what well, today it's all about trial and error, okay? If you've never made them before and you're making these with the kids, just you know you'll get a big huge one and you'll get a little tiny flat one. But it doesn't matter because who's gonna know? And you're just gonna eat it anyway. So this is just simmering away here. Yeah, so I'm gonna take it off slightly. Just I'm just frightened about boiling over. Okay, so it's just bubbling, kind of nicely, gently bubbling. So we're just going to start timing out now. So that's three minutes, exactly three minutes, okay. Yeah, keep going on it, you should get more too. So that's boiling up again. So this is far too high. So I'm going to turn it right down. Okay. Yeah. So that's the danger of this, okay. So as soon as you take your eyes off it, uh, that's what happens. So we'll keep it on here. What I normally do is keep a spoon, a cold spoon, and just dip it in, and that takes the temperature down. That's a slight amount. Yep. Scrape the bowl out there, Andy. Looks like a really good scrape out. Good. Yep. So. What he's going to do is he's going to put that into the oven in the back kitchen and he's going to put it in there at 180 degrees for around about uh, five to eight minutes and let that cook in there. So this here is going to boil over. There we go. And you're live on TV. So these are ones that Andrew's prepared earlier, okay? That'll be jumpy. So over here he's got a kettle, so we get the kettle Andrew and just put that stuff in the sink as well. Yep, so he's got a hot kettle, he's got a little bucket, jug. Yep, so he's got a boiling hot. Um, but what he's got is one packet of orange jelly. Uh, and if you're like me, when I was a wee kid, I used to eat the squares, uh, eat the squares and suck the squares out of these. Really, really sweet too. Um, so you've got that. And what he's going to do is going to break the squares up and put them into that bucket before he puts the water in. <laughs> okay, so we just take that out of the way, so as people can see. So this is boiling for three minutes. It has to be three minutes. Yeah. So we're going to turn it off. And in here. What I've got is the juice of three lemons. Yeah, so exactly three. Sorry, two lemons. <laughs> three? Why did I say three? Anyway, two lemons. What I'll do is what I'll put the recipe for this up uh, on my Facebook page. Um, so you get the quantity of the lemons, right? Yeah, so it's just two lemons. I'm going to just put that in and just mix it in. So there we go. Like that. And then we've got the sugar. So we'll put the sugar in. Sweet that up. Yep. And that's the sugar in. Like that. And just let the sugar dissolve a wee bit. So 
what you want to do, Andrew, is in here we have got, so we've got the jelly cubes in here, and this is for the filling for the Jaffa cakes, okay? So we're trying to do two things at the same time, so don't get confused. We all get confused. But, uh, so in here we've got marmalade, so it gives it a nice kind of orangey, marmalade taste. I've left the strands into it, so it says on the recipe just put one in, but we're going to put all of it in. Okay, like that. And in here I've got uh, some, if I can read it, uh, clementine. So I've got a little clementine, and this is from Major Foods. If you don't have this, it's not crucial, but uh, since I've got it, I thought I'll put that in as well, just to strengthen the flavour. So I'll put some of this in. So hopefully you've all been online to Major International and got your six pack of free, uh, free samples. So get on there and get that. So it's Major International. Uh, and you can get your, your little freebie like that. These majors predominantly supplies, you know, chefs uh, in restaurants and hotels and things like that. So it's really, really good. You're not getting that on the on the shelf in the supermarket. Okay, so check that out. Order. So you're going to put in here uh, 125 mils of uh, water, which is in the wee jug. Which I did have. Yeah, that goes through there. Well, you want to put in 124 mils. So it's 124 mils. Yeah. Put that in. Yeah, so exactly. So it's not a lot of water, a wee bit more. So it's not a lot of water. Still not a lot of water. Yeah, so that's your jelly. So this is, remember this is for the filling for the, for the Jaffa cakes, okay? So we've got that. So we're going to pour that in, like so. And then let that dissolve, okay? So while that's dissolving, we'll carry on with the, the lemon faucet. Okay, so we've got that there, that there. And I'm just going to whisk it in. I did have that wee glass gel, I think what happened to it. So we've got our lemon faucet mixture here. And this is really, really, really simple. We used to have this one in the in the restaurant, and uh, we used to do all these fantastic desserts. It took us ages making them, uh, all the different elements to it, uh, sugar and things like that. And this was the most popular one. Really easy to make. Really simple. And so we'll just fill it back into the jug, like so. And take that off to one side. The really scary thing about this is you think it's not going to set, but uh, trust me, it does. Take this cooker out of the way, up. That'll dissolve that, are you? <laughs> okay, so if you put it on the cooker a wee bit and just kind of melt it a bit more. So here I've got some nice, nice bowls. You can put them into cocktail glasses, uh, whatever you want, but try, try not to make the portion too big because it is quite quite rich, okay? So try not to make it too much. And what you can do as well, I'll put it into like little mini um, coffee cups and things like that and put it with a, another dessert, um, which is quite good. So anyway, we've got these. Uh, and you can have like wine glasses, whatever you've got kicking about the house. And these are really, really simple to do. So you just fill them up evenly. That. So try not to touch the sides of the glass because then it smears and it's quite difficult to get it nice and clean all the way through. So it's quite simple, just fill it up like so, like that. And just evenly between them. So, so there's four of us, so we've made four. And that'll be for, oh, I spilled that a bit. So what I'm going to do is take this through, let it cool down a wee bit before we put it in the fridge and then put it on the shelf, it's nice and even. So we've got a nice big uh, fridge in the back kitchen. So what we'll do is take that through and then let it set. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll finish it off there. Is that that good? Put it onto the bigger, bigger ring.
Okay, so what we've got here is the them faucets, and as you can see, they've quite they've set, yeah, quite well. So we've got four of them. And what I'll do is I'll just decorate one up just like that. Okay, while uh, Andrew's trying to melt this super jelly that doesn't want to melt, it must be nearly half it now. Let's see. Put it, put it more over the heat. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'll continue garnishing this up. So I'll take one off. So what I've got in here is, I've just got bits of meringue that uh, I had for another dessert I was doing. And broke it up. And I've just dusted it with some uh, cocoa powder, okay, just to make it like little rocks or whatever. And then I'll just place them in, like this. So we used to serve it like that in the restaurant and charge two pounds something, okay? Then we done it up like that, and then we charge eight pounds. So if you garnish it up and enhance it a wee bit, you can get a, a bit more for it. And it looks a wee bit more substantial than just being a bit of cream, which has been thickened up. So we've got a couple of bits of the meringue, so we just arrange that in, in here, like this. We've got that nicely arranged in there. Now I've got some nice uh, raspberries. Uh, obviously these are not local, but they're uh, Spanish. So I thought I would uh, pick up the Spanish and maybe they'll, they'll look after me when I go on my holidays there next year. Give it a little look. So anyway, I've got that. And then what I've got is a nice wee bit of dehydrated orange. Yeah. So remember I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago that I got a brand new um, dehydrator for my Christmas. It sounds a bit sad, but that's, uh, that's what I get. So Andrew's got that melted eventually. Okay, so I'll show you what to do with that in a minute. So this is the lemon faucet. So we've got the wee bits of meringue, which kind of thickens it up. Then we've got a wee bit of orange. I uh, don't know if it really goes with it, but I think it gives it a bit of color. We'll just pop it maybe in there. And then what I've done is I've made a little bit of coolie, and which is really just icing sugar fresh uh, raspberries with maybe a wee bit of a lemon cello in it. So we put a wee bit of lemon cello in there just to kind of jazz it up a wee bit. And then I'll just pour that over the top of the, over the, top of the raspberry, like so. Like that, and that's that. And then a nice wee bit of, so the, uh, the mint leaves are just starting to come up in my garden at the minute, so it's quite good when they're just starting to come up because you get nice little tops on them. Uh, once they start growing like a weed, uh, it gets a bit, a bit too big. So this is quite nice. Maybe this one's a wee bit too big. So we'll put him in there like that. And then we'll get a nice plate. So now if you think it's a wee bit too busy, you don't need to put the, the biscuit in. So we'll just put that in there. So that looks fantastic. So that looks as if with the Mr. Pooks in Castle Douglas, you'd pay a fortune for that and uh, be worth it. Definitely. Now we've got a little bit of biscuit. So we've got a little bit of biscuits. So you can either just hang that on the side, maybe. If it hangs on the side, that is. I think you want to just hang it on the side like that, like a cocktail. So it looks like a little cocktail. And then maybe put a couple on the side. You've got that. I'll bring up the camera, maybe you can see it a wee bit better. So you cut that there, you cut it all nicely, nicely done. And this is beautiful, really simple to make, really easy, and it looks quite uh, quite good. Andrew's desperate to get his hands on it by the looks of things. So that's that, and that's that. So we'll put these, and then Andrew will be having these for his tea tonight. Do you want to taste one? Is it alright? Do you want to keep it for your tea? Oh, keep it. Yeah. Keep it for your tea. Yeah, okay. So he's going to keep that for his tea, and then we'll move on to the We'll move on to the bit you've all been waiting for, the java cakes. So what we've got is a little tray. So we've got our java cakes all made. So as you can see, they didn't rise up too much. Is there gas in there? Yeah, just turn it off. Okay, just turn it off. So we'll turn the gas off. So we've got our, let's clear this. There's the jug we're looking for here. Anyway. Okay. So we've got Java cakes made. Okay, so what you're going to do is get a little spoon out of the drawer, please, Andrew. 
big, big spoon. Yeah. And just go around them and free them so like that. So make sure they're nice and loose and, and check that they're out of the out of the spoon. So you can see they're quite still spongy on the bottom. Like that. So what we're gonna do is set our gel. So I've got a tray, if you've got a tray maybe half that size, good. Uh, but I don't, so I'm gonna have to use it otherwise. Even if you have just got a small tray, line it with a bit of cling film. Okay, so we line it with cling film like so. And the best thing to do as well is put a wee bit of water on your tray and then the cling film kind of sticks to it a bit better. Okay. Rub that. So we've got that, like that, and then we're gonna pour in our jelly. So you're gonna see how I'm gonna make my tray a little bit shorter. Okay, so I've got the beautiful orange jelly and I've got all my marmalade in there, don't forget. And I've got that thing there, so I'll keep Alan happy. Pour that on like so. If you can get the live stream on that, thank you. So I'll just pour it all in. Like so. Don't worry if you get the wee bits and strands and things in there. You know, kind of adds to it. Just place that over there in the way. So what I'm going to do is gently bring up the, the jelly. Bring up the jelly like that. And as you can see, I'm kind of rolling the cling film. So I'm making a little side. Like that. So Andrew's mission <laughs> is to get this to the fridge on a level shelf. Yep. On a level shelf and then put it in the fridge and just let it set. Okay, and that will set. And it'll be quite firm as you'll see in a wee minute um, when it comes out. So if you do that, Andrew, I'll hold the door open for you. Yeah, so he's with uh, he's got quite a steady hand, so that's good. Um, let's put that there. So now we have the jelly, which is set. So what we're going to do is cut out the little circles for the centre of the um, chocolate. So I've got the chocolate over here. Just place them in the middle. We do some uh, chocolate workshop, chocolate classes, uh, when we do our craft bakery. We do a bit of tempered and chocolate. I don't know if anybody's done tempered and chocolate. We do tempered and chocolate. We make little sweets, uh, little moldy chocolates, and things like that. So keep a look on the, on the website, college website. And you'll see whenever the craft bakery is coming up. Is that melted, Andrew? Uh, 
circles on top so you can see I'll bring that up so you can see it so you can see that that's all like that nice wee, wee circles yeah so you give out about 10 seconds good so we've got that so this is uh, you've got plenty of jelly so if you're doing quite a few of these you can be melting jelly So we've got the chocolate, chocolate's ready, Andrew's got the chocolate ready. Yeah, beautiful. So you don't want it too hot or it'll start melting the jelly, okay? So we just let it cool down a wee bit slightly and just mix it. Then Andrew's going to get me a, a fork out of the drawer, please. And then what you do is just, not too much, over the top, like so. Push it around the sides. Don't put too much chocolate on it, then we end up not being able to try and get it out of, out of the trays. Okay, just enough on the top. Maybe a bit too much in that one. They don't have to be perfect like you would buy in the shop. So I mean, you want them to look a bit homemadey so that whenever your uh, your pals come round or you're having a kids party or something, you can make these quite big. You can make big huge java cakes, java cakes as in a cake rather than the little bun sizes, if you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean, Andre? Yeah, you guys. Just kidding. Andre, you know what I mean. <laughs> and then we just keep doing that and then put them out in these little trays. Some people put them on the wire rack, racks and then put them on, but I think, you know, if you put them in these bun trays, it stops them from flowing too much around the sides. Yeah, and what you don't want to do is have a level covering of, of chocolate because then whatever they are, you can't get them out. So it's just to try and get them almost to the sides, but not quite, and just cover them up like that. And then we've got a really kind of cool bit coming up in a second. The good challenge about making these is I don't know whether it's a good challenge or not, especially if you've got the kids making them, is trying to get them not to lick their fingers. Uh, is, a, is a big challenge. If you can do this without licking your fingers, uh, you're a real hero. So we've got that, we've got them all on the top, and then what we'll do is try and flatten them a wee bit. Like that. So it kind of spreads the chocolate out. And then you can start seeing the little bit in the middle. It starts to look like an authentic uh, Java cake. Move it around the sides. Put it on. But the more of these you do, the more times you do these, the better you get. Like everything else, you know, the more times you practice. Uh, and you might even come up with a better technique that I've just shown you. Um, so just let them set a wee second, I'll just wash my hands, or lick my fingers. I guess we've done any chocolate in my chin? No. So uh, we've done that, and then what you want to do is get a fork, and then do the little on the top, like that. And then that gives you the nice authentic, probably better way to do it that cools down a wee bit and sets. Oh. Okay, so then you've got them all done like that, put that in there. Like that. So then that's you got your, your little chip. Okay, so I mean they were just quick and um, done. Just let them sit, take them out, have them on a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. Good playtime for the kids. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow. The weather is looking quite good, so we might maybe if it's not too windy get outside for a barbecue. If not, we'll just do it in here. Um, the last time we were all set up outside, and it was just far too windy, and it would take too long to get everything back inside. So what we're going to do is set up in such a way that we can go either way. So anyway, if you want to do a little beef dish, 
Um, next, gar garlic marinated beef for the barbecue. Uh, a wee bit of rocket salad, um, blue cheese, and we'll see you for lunch. Okay, thank you. Couple of disasters nearly there, but there. It's not our thing to like go a thing like. Oh, and also, see when we do it, uh, you're talking. Talk to me as if I'm an adult, your instructor, not a child. Alright. Okay, because <laughs> I'm standing here, double the size of you, and you're going, are you little, little fingers? And I'm like, <laughs> it's a joke, but it's alright. Do you freaking like turn away a book? Yeah, there's Java Keeps Going Megan. Right, let's see what the whole comment you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I could have looked over a bit of oh, shit, I forgot to turn that friggin' genre on the map. Nice close up of the guns and. You said that? That's anti land. Cheers, cheers, anti land. <laughs>